I received a very encouraging phone call yesterday from a dear friend in Northern Ireland. His wife had encouraged him to call those whom he felt the Lord had used to encourage him in his life and to let them know that he was thankful. And it was a very heartwarming thing. And it brought back many happy memories of opportunities uh, to serve together there in County Fermanagh. And uh, I recall one particular story, which I'd like to share now. Uh, I had been invited the year before, I believe, to share the gospel at a businessman's luncheon. And there were, I think, about eight Christian brothers in the town who were all men of some influence in the town. And they met weekly for prayer for the town. And people would call in and ask them specifically to pray for people. They were from different church backgrounds, but they united in prayer. And uh, they had a tremendous influence in Enniskillen. And so once a year, they would uh, rent a room at a beautiful hotel on Loch Earn, And there would be a very uh, upscale lunch with uh, carvery and so on. It was, it was very beautiful. And each of the men would invite a table full, and he would pay for that table for their dinners, hoping that they would hear the gospel in a clear way. And uh, most of these business people who came really were at arm's length with Christianity. Many of them had rejected the gospel or rejected Christianity, perhaps through bad experiences. And so it was a, a very diplomatic thing. We had to be careful in how we communicated the gospel to them. The year before, I had been placed at a table with the uh, government representative from County Fermanagh, and we had a very good conversation. And in fact, he invited me subsequently to Stormont House, which is the Irish Northern Ireland Parliament. And I was able to have a very delightful time there. I was invited into the members-only lounge and actually able to share the gospel with a number of these representatives of the, of the government. So on this occasion, which was the next year, I was very sensitive to uh, where the Lord might place me to have a good conversation. And uh, so I waited and waited and the tables filled up and there was one table in the middle that had several open seats, and it was almost time to start, and it seemed no one was sitting at their table. And so I came over, and I said, excuse me, would it be possible for me to share your table with you? And one of them responded, sure, that's fine. No one else wants to sit with us. I said, oh, and why is that? They said, well, we're the local tax office. <laughs> one of the Christians, uh, I think an accountant, who had already invited a table full, happened to be in the tax office and just on a venture said, how, how would you folks like to come for uh, this lunch? And so they had come and he had paid for another whole table and uh, that was the table I sat down at. Well, as we began to converse, one of them asked me this question. He said, um, now, the Bible says that Jesus ate with tax collectors and sinners. Why does it say that? Were tax collectors not sinners? Or um, were they a special class of sinner? Or why does it say that? He was referring, of course, to a story in Matthew chapter 9 that uh, Jesus, as he was traveling through the area up near the hometown of Capernaum, there was a tax office and a man named Matthew was sitting there collecting taxes and Jesus said to him, follow me. And immediately Matthew left his engagement and he followed the Lord. He not only followed the Lord, but he made a, arrangements to have a dinner in his home with Jesus present and he invited the whole local tax office. And when the Pharisees saw this, they were very, very upset to think that many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Now, these sinners may have been simply Gentiles 
because that's what they're referred to in Galatians chapter 2. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners of the Gentiles. And this was Galilee of the Gentiles, and it may be that they were Gentiles. Or it may be that they were Jews who were living as if they were Gentiles. In other words, they were Greek uh, living according to the Hellenistic rules rather than the strict Orthodox Jewish rules. Whatever the case, the tax collectors and sinners had gathered with Jesus. And so I tried to explain this. And, and of course, the punchline was that the Pharisees didn't say this directly to Jesus, but they said among themselves, what's he doing hanging out with those tax collectors and sinners? To which Jesus responded to them. Now, gentlemen, if you saw a doctor with some sick people, what would you say? What is that doctor doing with all those sick people? Doesn't he know they're sick? Well, of course he does. It's not people who are well who need a doctor. It's people who are sick. And he said, I didn't come to call the righteous. I came to call sinners to repentance. Now I said, here's a fascinating fact that Jesus asked Matthew, somebody from the tax office, to write the first book in the New Testament, his first biography, Matthew. It's just remarkable, isn't it? And so obviously Jesus has a special place in his heart for tax collectors. And on another occasion, when he was down in Jericho, there was a tax collector who was so interested to meet Jesus rather embarrassed to be seen in public, that he, he was a short man. He ran ahead, climbed up in a tree so that he could see Jesus as he passed by. His name was Zacchaeus. And as Jesus walked along the road, he suddenly stopped and looked up into the tree and addressed Zacchaeus, invited him to come down, and he said, I'm going to your house today. And he said, today, salvation has come to the house of Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus immediately responded, saying that whatever it took, he wanted to be right with the Lord. If he had taken money unlawfully, he would restore it fourfold, and so on. And uh, it's a wonderful story about another man from the tax office who was, Jesus uh, invited himself to the house for Jesus, who appears very often to be a guest, always ends up being the host. He's the one who is able to enrich us and bless us. And I said, that's the whole point. Jesus doesn't just want to be a guest. He wants to be the host. He doesn't just want to be a stranger to you. He wants to be your best friend. And we had a wonderful time talking there around the table about this glorious truth. These people, the tax collectors, were despised by the Jews because they um, the Jews felt that they were traitors to the cause. They, they were collecting funds for the Romans, and they shouldn't even be paying taxes to the Romans because they should have been their own nation and have been paying taxes to their own country. Um, but nonetheless, these tax collectors found a friend in Jesus, and Jesus was willing to have dinner with them, to share the gospel with them, and to save them too. And so, while we think about um, our own tax office, we might not be on the friendliest of terms, might not think of them in any sort of warm-hearted way, but I think it's a good idea if we would pray for the people in the tax office and others who may seem to be rejected by society, that we should pray for them too, because Jesus wants everyone to come to God through him.